Hey guys, it's Ginger on Wheels here. I'm with the Mantis Pro SE and it's got a pop tire. So I'm gonna show you how to change it real quick. Let's roll the intro and hopefully you can learn a thing or two. Okay, so step one is to remove the rubber caps that go on the axle nuts. My pop tire is the rear tire. And step two is to get an 18 millimeter socket. And this is not a socket that comes in a standard set. You usually have to buy these separate by themselves for whatever reason, thank you Cabo. Uh, put it on the end and you wanna loosen these to the left. You wanna loosen this one to the left and loosen that one to the left. And then take that off. And there's a little washer in here with a hook on it. You can see right there, it's hooked into a piece of the frame. So you wanna get a screwdriver, flathead, and just pop the hook out right there. And then once the hook comes out on both sides, there's one there and then one in the front here, then you can slide the tire out through the gap in the frame there. And that's what we're gonna do. So just get a screwdriver and pry it in there. And you can see how this little hook thingy comes out of the frame on that side. We're gonna do the same thing over here. Just take a screwdriver and pry. That one came out pretty easily step right now I'm gonna do get an allen wrench and loosen these two bolts and pull the brake caliper off so that when I pull the tire off it doesn't pull the hydraulic line out of the deck there fun okay so if you've been riding your scooter pretty hard like I have uh, this is gonna be pretty jammed up in the sides of the frame I've got a, a rubber mallet here and I'm just gonna hit the axle like that you don't want to use a regular hammer because if you damage the threads on this you're not gonna be able to get the axle nuts back on so I'm just gonna bash the crap out of this until the tire comes off. All right, yes, the tire is off. And yes, that's the motor wire going into the deck. We've got a pretty short leash, huh? Luckily, we don't have to pull the tire all the way off. This is as much as we need. What we're gonna do now this might be hard to see, but there are some screws inside the rim here. I think there's like seven or eight or six. But we're just gonna undo these screws and then the rim actually pulls into two pieces. It goes boop, and then this side goes boop. And then the tire, we can just pull that straight off. This is called a split rim design and it's by far the best design on scooters. Okay, so I used my drill with the size four on the end of it and I took out all the screws that were along the edge of the rim here. And for the record, there are six screws in the side of the rim. And now the room can just pull in half. There we go. Okay, you can see I just pulled the rim in half. And this is what we're looking at. Just wanna take this side of the rim. See how the valve was stuck in the hole there? Make note of that. So this is what it looks like with the tire off. Pretty cool, right? Just half the rim slides off and you can put your new tire and tube on and then slide this half of the rim on. One thing to be aware of though, you can pinch the tube in the seam here. So you gotta be aware. This is the fun part though. We get to inspect the old tire and tube and figure out what the heck happened. Was it a, a pinch flat from me being too fat or was it a thorn or a nail or what? So what you can do, pull the old tube out. And first thing you wanna do is run your finger along the inside of the old tire and try and feel for thorns or nails or something to make a visual inspection while you're at it. It doesn't appear that there's anything puncturing these tires, so I guess it was a pinch flat. Now we all know how hard tires and tubes are to get, but luckily they do sell tube repair kits, so you don't need to actually like spend $30 on a new scooter tube. You can just buy a inner tube repair kit for a bicycle and it comes with a little piece of sandpaper and you sand the patch and you put the patch on and then you glue it and they actually do work really well so you can use those what i'm going to do right now is inflate this tube to about two to five psi just so it's a little donut shaped and then i'm going to submerge it in water and try and see where the bubbles are coming out and then we can try and diagnose exactly what happened to this tube where's the air leaking out of is it coming out of the valve or did i pinch it is there a thorn all right, so I got my portable air pump and I just pumped the tube up a little bit and then put my tube in this bucket of questionable murky water and try and see where the bubbles are coming out of the tube. And I can see they're coming out right there. 
so oh yeah that's a pinch flat for sure you can tell because it's right across the seam and it's just a long line so it looks like the tube got pinched against the rim and it just broke right on the seam there so this is a result of me having the tires under inflated or being too fat so I was really ripping it off-road when I popped this thing. I'm guessing I had all my weight on the rear tire and I like hit a root or something. And when I'm going that fast and I'm 200 pounds and you hit all the weight on one tire, it's probably three or 400, maybe more pounds of pressure on the tire. And it says on the side, do not exceed, what is it? 200 and some. And I'm gonna guess that I broke that. Yeah, don't exceed. Max load is 77 kilograms. We definitely exceeded that. So these are the stock tires that come with the Mantis Pro. And I think they're two and a half inch. And then these are the tires that we're gonna put on. They're off-road and they're wider. When you buy these tires from Voro Motors, which I highly suggest you do if you have a Mantis Pro SE, get these uh, wider fenders also. They sell them on the site. And then you can have a wider fender to make sure that more of the tire is covered than it would be. So now that I know I got a pinch flat, I think I'm gonna be a little more cautious about keeping my tires overly inflated if I can, and I'm definitely gonna use some slime. I use the slime in my bigger scooters and I really should have been using it on the smaller scooters because you're more prone to flats on smaller tires. Anyway, let's get this new tire put on. You remove the fender just by taking off two tiny little screws on each side, and you are gonna reuse the screws, so keep those. All right, got my new tube, it's partially inflated. Just wanted to get some form to it so it wasn't a big mushy blob. And this is one of the new tires. You wanna make sure that the Vs go towards the front of the, t of the scooter so it's mounted like this. And I'm gonna pop the tube inside the tire here. And then we take our valve. Remember it's at a 90 degree angle. And you wanna take this side of your rim that comes off and put the valve through Lay hole. And then the magic happens. We just slide. So this is what it looks like. We're gonna slide the rim together and connect it right here without pinching our inner tube and then put these six screws back in. I'm just gonna use my size four bit again. these screws in one by one. The hardest part by far is getting this half of the tire and rim lined up with the holes on the other side of the rim. So you might have to take it off and move it a little bit and push it back on a few times. Here's a little pro tip for you. Two six millimeter hex wrenches on each side of this, loosen it, and it will spread the forks apart enough that you can slide the tire up on back into these holes. But if you don't do that, these things are way too narrow to get the tire back on. So you need two six millimeter hex wrenches. Okay, once you get these things loosened, you can just take your tire and slide it back onto the slots right there. I'm gonna make sure these little clip things are facing the back on the inside. And I wanna find my other clip washers and put them back on like they were before. So here's the clip washer with the hook. And that's the hook, the slot that the hook goes in. So you push the washer on and make sure that it goes like that. And I'm gonna get my axle bolt here, 18 millimeter, and thread that back on, and that's it. Okay, tires on, just a couple of little finishing steps here. I don't wanna gloss over anything. Take your 18 millimeter, tighten these up, obviously as tight as you can, and then take, where are they? little covers. You can put the dab of super glue in there and pop them back on. Make it all aesthetically appealing again. Um, you don't want to forget to take your two screws. Two. I promise there's two. Two screws. A couple little finishing steps here because I don't want to gloss over anything. But you want to take your 18 millimeter. Obviously tighten the axle bolts up as tight as you humanly can. Take the rubber grommets. Get a little dab of super glue and pop those babies back on there. And then take the two screws that you use to remove the brake caliper. You wanna put them back in their little homes and seat the brake caliper back on there. 
If you need instruction on how to seat the caliper and make it uh, prevent it from scraping, I have a video, I'll link that up here. You can watch that and learn how to all about brakes. Um, scratch whatever I had said about the fenders. I had them in my head completely wrong. This fender with the KB goes in the front and this replaces your stock and fender, your stock fender entirely. This rear fender, however, goes in between your um, axle nuts there, in between the frame. Makes it really hard to tighten the nuts down without this bar moving, so I'm gonna have to uh, put some red Loctite on these for sure. But this is the stock fender that was already on there. And then this aftermarket fender kind of slides underneath it and is held on with these two stands. If you don't already have one of these, you should definitely get one. It's a digital tire pump and you can set the PSI and plug it in and it will automatically pump the tires up while you're off picking your nose. All right, you guys, that sums up my video on the Cabo Mantis Pro SE tire change. These are some sweet new off-roading tires. If you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment down below, but check the comment section first in case someone's already asked, but I will answer any questions you've got. Thanks again for watching and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already.